go to the last chapter of Mark chapter 6, 16 and uh, we will be seeing here the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and I will be reading Mark chapter 16 verses 1 to 8 for today. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he has told you. And he went out and fled from the tomb. For trembling and an astonishment had seized them. And he said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Now this is a story about Jesus who rose from the dead and he was not there anymore. He is risen. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome are here at the tomb in order to add the fragrance Nicodemus used for Jesus' body. Nicodemus had brought 75 pounds of bear and aloes earlier to anoint or to use uh, uh, to Jesus' body. And let's recall that the disciples and the women supported Jesus' ministry. We see this in Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. He followed him from Galilee to the Mount of Olives for the Passover. And even here, during the time of the resurrection until the time of his burial. He came to the tomb when the light would have just started to creep into the sky. It could be around 5 o'clock in the morning and be fully above the horizon at around 6.30 in the morning. John says that the women come while it was still dark. Luke says, at early dawn, while Matthew says, toward the dawn. And while they were walking along the way, they were asking, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Because it was covered with a huge stone. It is estimated to be one to two tons in weight. Moreover, according to their tradition, there would be a cord placed where the stone meets the rock face and wax poured over the seam. No one would have been able to move the stone without breaking the wax. In short, there was no way the women can move the stone by themselves. That's why they were asking, who will move the stone for us? Before the women arrived, let's remember that the night that, that he was buried, Pilate sealed the stone and he set guards so that Jesus' followers cannot disturb the scene. As we read that in Matthew 7, 62 to 66. When an angel came down and rolled away the stone, the guards rose or fainted in terror. And after the women, the women leave, the guards go to the chief priest to, or after the guards left, the women went to the um, to the disciples in order to report what happened to the body. Also, the guards left and reported to the chief priest, and the chief priest bribed them to say that they fell asleep, and the disciples stole Jesus' body. So there was this rumor that the disciples stole the dead body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, going back to these women, they were greatly surprised when they arrived that they saw the stone was rolled away. 
Why? Because it was the angel who moved it for them to see, to get inside the tomb. Now, let's take note that the stone, it was a very heavy stone, was not moved away in order for Jesus to go out, but for them to go inside and see that the tomb is empty. They saw there an angel dressed in white robe, and they were alarmed. In the other accounts, like in the book of John, there were two angels. And this angel here told them, told them not to fear. Jesus is risen, and they are to meet him in Galilee. And they have to tell Jesus, uh, the disciples right away. They went out and fled from the tomb, and they were trembling and astonished. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now we ask this question, why is it that these are the reactions of the women? Why is it that they were afraid they did not expect that the body of the Lord Jesus Christ will be gone? And they were worried that nobody will move away the stone for them. Let's not be quick to criticize these women for being doubtful, fearful, and they were not believing to the angel. We ought to be so sympathetic to them because many times we also have doubts and unbeliefs, don't we have? They did not expect Jesus to be alive. In fact, they were bringing ointments to anoint the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. They expect that they will see a dead body rattling there. Are we not like them in many ways when we we know what is the truth, but it's hard for us to believe. They were told by Jesus many times over that he will rise, he will be resurrected. But it seems to us that they did not believe. It was hard for them to believe this truth. They were skeptical about Jesus rising from the dead. And this adds the strong argument that the story of the resurrection was not manufactured by these women because they did not believe at the beginning that Jesus will rise from the dead at the third day. But isn't it that in our lives sometimes we have some expectations of the worst that like these women, they expect that they just will see a rattling body of the Lord Jesus Christ that they are going to unknow it. And lo and behold, to their surprise, Jesus is risen. And this is the expectation that we can expect from God. God is the God of expectations. The God can do more than what we think, more than what we imagine. God will always fulfill his words, even though it's hard to believe. He cannot believe that Jesus will rise from the dead, seeing the helpless, lifeless body of the Lord Jesus Christ, mutilated, distorted, and it was unimaginable, how indescribable because of the beatings and the body was mutilated, yet the truth is that Jesus rose from the dead. His body was changed into a glorified body, and that's the news that we have as believers. We have a living the Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ did not remain in the grave. So let's be encouraged today, today, every day, we have to think and believe that our God is alive. He is in heaven right now. He's going to come again and promise to receive us unto himself that we will be with him forever. And let's continue to think and trust that we, we see that the tomb is empty. Yes, the tomb is empty. The Lord Jesus Christ did not stay there. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning that we have this wonderful time of your word. I pray that you will continue to remind us that 
we have a living hope because our God is alive. He did not remain in the grave. He did not remain at the cross. Jesus conquered sin, death, and hell. And that he's coming again in order to receive us unto himself. Lord, thank you for this truth. Lord. Thank you that we are reminded once again, Lord, we are so grateful to be reminded this morning about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us that you will transform our sadness, our worries, our and doubts and unbeliefs into faith, Lord, as you did to this women. Lord, we know that we can continue that stereotype to you are the God of the surprises. You always amazes us. And thank you, Lord, that you have this truth for us today in order to have a, a proper attitude and that we can approach the day with the truth that you are with us. You are alive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.